Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be installing Manjaro Architect 20.0.03, right after this. So I'll set up here. I'm going to have to use Proxmox for this today. Uh, just simply because my hardware is tied up at the moment. I'm still working on that ZFS benchmark. Uh, and uh, and so when I get that done, I'll be able to release that machine and do something else with it. But for now, let's, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, you know, to download this. You know, let's see. Let's get rid of that. And go in here and open this. So when you when you go to download Manjaro, you have you have a number of options that you can pick. There's XFCE, there's no, there's Plasma, there's GNOME, and then there's Architect. Inside of Architect, there are a number of other options that you can choose to. For there are some different desktops such as Budgie. There's a number of window managers such as i3, OpenBox. Uh, awesome, and, and some of those are in there as well. So I'm going to be using uh, the, the Architect version, and to do that, you just go over here and then press download and get the 64-bit version of that. So <clears throat> I'm, that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, I've already done all that. I've already done all the downloads. So all I need to do is to create a VM. I'll give it a name, tie it back to the NAS, and there's Manjaro Architect right there. And we'll take the defaults for the controller and the size of the disk. I am going to give it two cores, two gig of memory, and then we'll confirm and let it build out. It'll take just a minute. Okay, all set. So let's go ahead and launch that. And while it's coming up, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to turn on line scaling. Yeah, view only may not be the right thing. So the first thing you get is you get this welcome page that gives you some options on what you can choose. So normally when you're installing this from the uh, full ISO for the desktop, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. I just went ahead and set them up. But here you probably, you know, you might be able to shortcut things a little bit if you want. If you have an NVIDIA driver, you'll probably want to select the non-free, for example. Uh, and then if you if you don't want UTC uh, for your time zone, you want to set it to your own, then yeah, you might want to change that. If your keyboard is different and your language is different, then you can set those appropriately. But this is set up pretty good for me, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to ahead and expand this out just a little bit so you can... Well, I thought I did that, didn't I? Maybe it didn't take. Yeah, it didn't take. Sometimes it does that. All right, so now I should be able to expand this. All right, so the first thing we get is a screen that has us, wants us to log in, and it gives us the uh, user ID and password. And then it tells us to type setup to enter the uh, configuration and setup windows. So, and it's going to start to download some stuff that it might need for this. Looks like it's setting up the key ring for the repository that it chose. We'll get an opportunity to pick one of our own. So, so again, it's asking me for my language. It's English, yep. And then it's telling me that the installer will download the latest packages, and there's some menu options that uh, I can use the up and down keys if I want to... Uh, it, you know, select some additional packages that are in the customization. So for, for right now, I think we're good. We'll start with the, we'll just start with the top of the list and I'll work our way down. 
So the first thing is to set the virtual console, and that's just a matter of setting your your, lo your geographic location. And so I'll do that. Then we might we can look at the devices that we have. We already know that it's SDA because that's what it always is with the VM. But uh, and it says we have a, a 32 gig uh, a disk drive. So we'll go ahead and do a partition, and we only have one choice now. If this had stuff on it, I could securely wipe it. That will take quite a bit of time. Uh, so you probably may not want to do that. You can elect an automatic partition, or if you prefer you to partition it out the way you want, you can do that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and just do automatic partitioning for now. And it's gonna create two partitions. One's for the boot, the 512 meg, and then the other one is, is left over for the root partition. So. And because the automatic doesn't provide space for the swap, I can't put swap on a partition. I'll have to put it in a file. So, all right, so we've done that. And I, now you have, I want to set up a RAID or LVM. If I want encryption, then I would have to do LVM and then LUX. And this is interesting. There's CFS as a possibility here to install as well. Hmm, I wonder what options they have. Now I only have, ah, uh, must be a future thing. All right, so I'll go ahead and we'll mount up the partition. So in this case, it's gonna start me with root. So I wanna pick the larger of the two. And then we'll wanna choose the file system we want. I'm gonna choose XFS. And then these are the options for your mount. So you can turn on or off whatever you prefer. And then it will mount it. And then <clears throat> the next thing, it'll want the swap partition. I'm going to use a swap file, and we'll, we'll make it to, to uh, 2 gig. And then it's additional partitions. We need to set this one up, too. So I think what this will do with this one is we'll make it an EXT4. And then we'll attach it to boot. Again, same thing. You can select whatever mounting options you want. Okay, so the next thing to do is to configure an installer mirror list. Now, I'll start this, but I'll, I'll go away and I'll come back when it's done. It takes quite a bit of time. It takes a few minutes to get through the list. So let's get, the, you can then choose if it's stable or you want testing or unstable. I want stable. And then we'll go ahead and select those custom mirrors. And as soon as it gets kind of down the list a little bit, you get the idea that it's actually testing for how fast the turnaround time is on the on the uh, test. So I'm going to pause it here, and I'll be back when this is done. Okay, so it's done, and it's now presenting me with a list that I can go through to to pick uh, the top ones that I want. So I I'm going to just pick. Uh, that one, that one, and I, I think that's all I need for now. I'll just do those two. I don't need to. I don't need to edit the the Pac-Man config or the Mirror config. I'm, I'm good. So I'll just go back here. And since we did get a new repo, we probably should refresh the keys. Because they are different servers, so. All right, so yeah, we'll do that. Choose the Pac-Man cache. Well, this is a FS check, which really isn't necessary, but I'll go ahead and turn it on anyway. You never know, somewhere down the line may install a file system that needs it. So the next step is I'll need to install a desktop. So I'm, I'm gonna want yay in the base, and then I want LTS. Now you have some other choices here, obviously. You can pick the latest kernel, you can pick, you know, an older one, maybe 5.8 or 5.9, whichever, <laughs> the bleeding edge. And then there's some real-time kernels as well. If you're doing a lot of audio kind of thing, uh, you might be interested in that. Uh, then you can choose which desktop environment you want. You can pick GNOME, KDE, XFCE. There's awesome. Uh, BSPWM, Budgie, Cinnamon, i3. LXDE, Mate, and Openbox. I'm going to pick Mate for today. 
and do I want to add any others? No. And then I want to choose a minimal installation. I, I That way I can pick what I want instead of it just giving me a bunch of stuff that I don't really need on my on my uh, VM. So we'll try to keep this nice and small and light and kind of in the spirit of what Arch is all about. This will also take a few minutes. Uh, so I'll be back. Okay, and it completed and it, it as soon as it was done, it brought back up this window. There wasn't anything I did to, uh, to, to do that. So you have your choice now for, now the, the question it's asking you on the boot screen is if you're using a GUI installer like the maybe you chose the Manjaro KDE installer that's for your that's for the live part of the uh, the install this is what you want to put on your desk and since I just have Intel drivers I'm going to select the free and I'll install a bootloader and I'm going to do grub I'm going to put it on dev SDA Uh, and then we'll configure the base, which we'll need to generate an, an FS tab. We'll set a host name. Uh, I guess this is that's okay. We'll just call it. I think I did Manja two. And then we'll set the system locale, and I want ENUS UTF eight, which is what it is. The same for the country as well. And then the keyboard layout, I'll have to go all the way down to the US at the bottom. Select that. And then select my time zone. We'll choose America. And then we'll scroll down. And again, I don't think they have my hometown, but they have one that's in the same time zone as me, which is fine. Now, in this case, I, it's, I'll leave it at that, but I want UTC for this. And then I'll set a root password. I'm just going down through the line, so if you think I'm jumping around, I'm not. I'm just going down through the list as it, as it comes. So, and then we'll put in me. Uh, I think I'll go for bash this time. Okay, I got that, and now I can come back, and then if I if I want, I can you know, and I can set. Well, let's go ahead and set automatic. Let's see it. Let's see how that works. The hibernation, I don't care about performance. Uh, I don't care about that. The rest of it, I don't really care about. We'll just do that, and then we've done the bootloader, configured the base, did the tweaks, review the config file. I don't need to do that. And then if I, you can root into the installation if there's some last minute things that you want to do before you reboot the system. Uh, maybe you have some special drivers that you need for your system or whatever it is you want to do there. You, you can take the time to do that. It just gives you a second chance. So if, if you want to see what configuration files you just generated, you can take a look at those as well. So I'm, I, and then down here, if you just want a you know a command line system, you can do a CLI. If you want to build a custom version of the system, you can do that too. System Rescue is useful if you're having after you've installed Manjaro and let's say you're a couple of months down the road and you start having some problems, you can put the installer back in and then bring up the System Rescue and then go in and, and bring Manjaro back in line with what should be a gold master copy. And then you can, from then on, you should be able to bring your system up again. But I'm done, so I'll go ahead and, and clear this. Do I want to save the log? It's late, not really. I mean, you may want to keep it, I don't. So I think I'm all set, so I'll just go ahead and reboot it here. <clears throat> and we'll cross our fingers, and hopefully if we did everything right, it should come back up. Now XFS will take a minute to initialize. So yep, there it is. There's XFS. And there we are. 
and our brand new shiny uh, architect version of Manjaro. So it, it did find my, my network card. That's good. Um, and it has attached me to the internet. So at this point, I, I'm not going to go much further with this. I mean, uh, the point of this with today was just to show you how to install Manjaro Architect if you wanted to do that. Uh, what choices you make as, as to, I mean, I love, I love Mate. I, I, uh, it just, it, it's just kind of a fun release to use when you're on a VM because it's so small. But just to, let's do that. Let's, let's go down here to the menu. Yeah. It's, it's bright. <laughs> it's very bright. Um, let's see. And it's also very green. Um, we'll have to do something about that. But let's see. Let's go. A top should be here. 309 meg used. Wow. Pretty lightweight. Um, 136 tasks. And then now I'm getting some messages about. So it's gone out to check to see if I have updates that I need to apply. And it's also saying <clears throat> if I if I want to learn, if I'm unfamiliar with the AUR, since I did pick yay, if I'm unfamiliar with the AUR, it can take me out to the wiki page and I can learn more about it. Or I can just press cancel. Uh, I'm going to press cancel, but if uh, if you're new to the AUR, AUR is a, a repository that is supplied by users. So it's not an Arch repository or a Manjaro repository. It is one provided by users. It's stuff that uh, community members put together and they make available to all of us in the community. So, and you can take advantage of that. So, yeah, if you're interested in that, you can learn more about it. Uh, so, yeah, that's really all I wanted to cover today. Uh, I wasn't going to pick it apart or do a review on it. I just I just wanted to go through the steps and, uh, and put them through and try to do an Arch Architect install. If you really want the, the system, if you really want to use Manjaro and you really want to put it together the way you want it to be put together, the architect is a, is a it's it's not hard. I mean, it's just it's it follow the bouncing ball basically. <laughs> you know, it's not that hard to do. But uh, yeah, if I can do it, you can certainly do it. So and <laughs> so I think with uh, I think with that, um, yeah, I think I'll I'll just keep this a nice short Friday video. I hope you all have a great week. See you on the next the next time we'll come back and we'll do the next Linux internals on Monday. And that should be the virtual file system. That's the one I'm going to cover. So, yeah, I know I know these are these will be viewed out of order, and someday somebody will okay, pick that up and go, wait, what are you talking about? And so, but at the time I was making this, I was working on a series of videos. But hope to see you all again real soon. If, and please like and subscribe. Bye for now. Thank you.